Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the World Day for Grandparents and the Elderly. We thank the Lord for the gift of their lives. And we thank the Lord that they teach us about tenderness and gentleness. As we pray for them today, let us also learn from them. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O 
O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grave that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther toward Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find fifty innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than fifty innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only forty are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the forty. Then Abraham said, let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only thirty are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but thirty there. Still Abraham went on, Since I have thus there to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than twenty? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the twenty. But he still persisted. Please let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least ten there? He replied, For the sake of those ten, I will not destroy it. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship you at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called you, answered me, you built up strength within me. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk amid distress, you preserve me. Against the anger of my enemies, you raise your hand. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the band against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. have received a spirit of adoption through which we cry, Abba, Father. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, 
one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then who are wicked know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. And that is tenderness. Gusto kong gamitin ang salita sa Tagalog na kahinahunan, pagiging mahinahon. Yes, the elderly may have become slow, but they have become also more tender, more gentle, more calm, more peaceful. Kaya sabi ni Pope Francis ngayong araw na ito, matuto tayo sa mga nakatatanda sa atin ng pagiging mahinahon. And our readings today also teach us that we can learn tenderness from prayer. Kapag tayo ay nananalangin at nagdarasal, matututo rin tayong maging mahinahon. In our first reading today from the book of Genesis, we see the encounter of Abraham with God in prayer. And Abraham encountered the God who is not flaming with anger, who is not quick to punish, but he encountered the God who is filled with tenderness and patience for him and the people of Sodom. Nakita natin sa unang pagbasa ang pananalangin ni Abraham at nakilala niya sa pananalangin na ang Diyos 
ay hindi nagmamadaling magparusa, kundi mapagpasensya. We heard the bargaining of Abraham and God. Abraham started with 50 innocent people and then he went down to 45, to 40, to 20, until 10. Abraham prayed to God, but God was not quick to punish. He took his time listening to Abraham. In our time today, when we are always quick paced, we are always, we always want instant, immediate, quick. Prayer can teach us about slowing down, tenderness, calmness, patience. Ang isang pusong nagdarasal ay mahinahon. At ang pusong mahinahon ay maayos magdesisyon. Ang pusong mahinahon ay maayos kumilos, mabuting magsalita sapagkat nagdarasal at mahinahon. Alam niyo po, ako ay natututo ng aking ng pagiging mahinahon kay Father Reggie na rektor natin. No? Mas matanda ho kasi siya sa akin. No? Baka sabi ni Father Reggie, binuko ko siya. No? Mukha lang siyang bata. No? Pero mas matanda ho yan sa akin. No? Si Father Reggie. No? Pero dahil siguro mas matanda na siya sa akin, ay mas natuto na rin siyang maging mahinahon. No? Kita nyo naman siguro sa aming dalawa, sino ang mas mahinahon sa amin. No? Minsan ko ay nag-uusap kami at mayroon akong nilapit na problema sa kanya. Sabi ko sa kanya, nakita mo ba ito? Anong sasabihin natin? Sabi ko, no? Kailangan may sabihin tayo. Anong gagawin natin, no? Naiinis na ako dito. Kailangan sagutin. Kailangan kumilos. Alam niyo ko, daldal ako ng daldal. Si Father Reggie ay walang sinasabi, no? Tahimik lang. At pagkatapos kong dumaldal, <laughs> tumahimik lang siya, no? Siguro hinintay lang niyang huminahon ako. At sa kanya itinuro, ano nga ba ang magandang gawin kapag mahinahon ka na? Sa panahon ngayon, laging nagmamadali. No? Kapag may sinabi yung isa, tatanungin ka agad, oh, anong reaksyon mo sa sinabi niya? Kaya tuloy minsan, nagsasalita tayo, hindi pinag-iisipan, Nagmamadali, hindi marunong huminahon ang puso. Hindi ko po sinasabing elderly na si Father Reggie, no? Pero yan ang natututunan natin sa pagiging mahinahon. Ang pagdarasal ay magtuturo sa atin, huminahon ang puso. Maging maayos ang pagdedesisyon. We also learn this in our gospel reading today when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. And Jesus presented the Father, the Father who is tender and patient to us. Even if we would go and become persistent even at midnight, the Father will listen to you in prayer. Even if you are persistent in seeking, in knocking, in searching, the Father is gentle. He will take time 
to listen to us in prayer. That is tenderness that we learn in our prayer to the Father. Kaya nga, tama rin siguro yung sinasabi ni Pope Francis that we can learn tenderness from our grandparents and the elderly. Diba tayong mga apo, kapag ayaw tayong pagbigyan ng magulang, kanino tayo tatakbo? Sa lolo at sa lola. Kasi ang mga lolo at lola, laging handang makinig sa atin. Laging matyaga at lagi rin sigurong nagbibigay. No? Yan ang gustong-gusto ng mga apo sa mga lolo at lola. Pero ang paalala ni Pope Francis ngayong araw na ito, bumisita at kumustahin ng mga lolo at lola, hindi para manghingi. No? Huwag muna tayong manghingi, tayo naman ang magbigay ngayon sa mga lolo at lola. At huwag lamang manghingi at magbigay, kundi matuto tayo sa mga nakatatanda sa atin. Bumagal man sila dahil sa edad nila, pero may karunungan minsan ang pagbagal, pag-iisip, paghinahon ng sarili. We can learn tenderness from our grandparents and the elderly. That is why in our second reading today, from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians, St. Paul describes God as someone who is tender to us even if we are sinful. He said, Even when you were dead in your sins and in your transgressions, He has forgiven you and He has brought you to life with Him. Ganyan kahinahon ang Diyos sa atin. Kahit daw makasalanan pa tayo, pinapatawad tayo ng Diyos at dinadala niya tayo sa bagong buhay. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this celebration of the Eucharist, in prayer, let us learn tenderness, gentleness from God. Let us also learn from the presence of our grandparents and the elderly how to be calm, how to take your time, and how to slow down in this world that is impatient and quick-paced. Sa misang ito, sa ating pagdarasal, huminahon po tayo sandali. Sapagkat sa pagdarasal, ang ating puso ay matututong pumanatag at maging mahinahon. Amen. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Christ makes a promise. Ask, and it will be given to you. Let us come to our Heavenly Father with the trust and confidence of the prayer our Lord taught us. For every petition, let us say, Lord, 
hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That a deepening of prayer may spread throughout the church on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That planners of economy and industry may turn to the Father who gives us our daily bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people caught in unlawful and sinful ways may seek forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may persist in prayer, no matter how we discourage we may be by life misfortunes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may be forgiven and raised up with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Almighty God, you are generous beyond our imagination and in ways we do not understand. Hear the prayers we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, 
he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me Please stand. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As one family in Christ Jesus, let us now call on God as our Savior taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
and with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer for the elderly and grandparents. All together, God, our loving Father, you are the source of life and of all gifts. You lovingly sustain us at every moment of our lives, and you bring us to fullness of life in Jesus, your Son, and our brother. We thank you for the wonderful gift of our grandparents and the elderly. You have given them to us to be our guide as they share with us the wealth of their experiences and the wisdom that they have gained through the years. We thank you for making them witnesses to us of your abiding presence and care at every turn and change of life. We pray that you bless all of them with joy and peace with satisfaction at the fruits of their labor and with the faithful love of their family. Strengthen their trust in your healing mercy in the face of the mistakes and sins of the past. Grant them the joy of companionship of their loved ones and friends. Protect them from all harm and evil that can obscure their vision of eternal peace and joy in your kingdom. Give them the patience and courage to bear the cross of sickness and weakness of the body. Help them see their sufferings and discomfort as they're sharing in the Paschal mystery of Christ. Grant us all, their family and friends, the grace of firm conviction and faith in the value and dignity of every human person created in your image and redeemed by the sacrifice of your Son on the cross. May this help us to continue to support, respect, and love them. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Once again, our gratitude to all of you who have joined us in this celebration, especially to our grandparents and elderly, and especially to those who are joining us through the online broadcast of this Mass, on the internet and on television, we pray that today our grandparents and the elderly may be blessed by our Lord Jesus Christ. And let us also express to them today our gratitude, love, and care for them. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy now and forever. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.